to look at a very important uh, eye condition called uh, glaucoma. So glaucoma is a problem of the eye, specifically um, increase in uh, intraocular pressure, uh, which ultimately leads to um, damage of the optic nerve, consequently uh, affecting uh, peripheral vision and um, ultimately even the central vision. Uh, so normally we have our intraocular pressure between 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury, and anything that goes above this will lead to uh, increased pressure on the optic nerve. So glaucoma is actually also called the silent thief of sight and we'll see why. So in terms of distribution, uh, glaucoma is the second most common cause of blindness and accounts to almost 12% of all the uh, cases of blindness that we have globally. So as you can see, it's actually a big global problem. So how does this occur? So we've already said that it is because of an increase in uh, intraocular pressure, but how does that really uh, happen? Now, ideally, what changes our intraocular pressure is the flow of aqueous humor, which is produced from the uh, ciliary body and drained through the trabecular meshwork. So uh, when we have excess production of um, aqueous humor more than it's been drained, or we're having a blockage in the drainage, therefore we'll end up having a buildup of the amount of aqueous humor and therefore mm -hmm. the amount of pressure. This pressure will continue pressing on one, the optic nerve, and two, the blood vessels that are around uh, this area. That will ultimately le lead to uh, ischemia and ne necrosis uh, or ischemia and death of the, the nerves around the retina area. And ultimately we end up start uh, having progressive loss of peripheral vision and ultimately the entire vision. So as you can see, this is uh, normal. Then we have um, early glaucoma. We have some dark spots in the periphery. Then it's like the, um, the periphery is becoming darker and darker, moving towards the center until now we end up having this kind of uh, vision. Actually, it's called tunnel vision. So the risk factors for uh, glaucoma include a family history, an older age, diabetes, um, uh, cardiovascular diseases, uh, other um, eye conditions like myopia, or if you have eye trauma, or if there's prolonged use of corticosteroids. So I mentioned the importance of aqueous humor <clears throat> and um, how that affects uh, uh, glaucoma. And so it's important we just understand the flow of uh, aqueous humor. You've said aqueous humor is produced from the ciliary body and it flows from the posterior uh, chamber and goes to the anterior chamber of the eye. And then um, it's drained via the <clears throat> trabecular meshwork which is found uh, at the iridocorneal angle, this angle which is here. So this is the normal flow of uh, uh, aqueous humor. So the types of glaucoma we might end up having, um, mostly we have primary glaucoma, which is made up of the two most common, open angle glaucoma and closed angle glaucoma. Then we have secondary glaucoma and congenital glaucoma. So this is what we'll really pay attention to, the primary glaucoma types. So this occurs when we have structural uh, problem in the circulation of uh, or reabsorption of aqueous humor. So we might end up having open angle and closed angle. So this is what happens in open angle. So the angle within between the um, iris and the cornea is open, is normal basically. But so the problem therefore is with the drainage, okay? So the angle is open, but the problem is with the drainage. So this is the most common type, accounts to 90%, and it's gradual. That's why we said um, this is also called the silent thief. You not even notice as it is occurring. Uh, it's even normally uh, painless. So it's uh, caused by resistance to outflow, and it's because of the blockage here, and develops slowly, and it's usually bilateral. So we see it in both eyes. So the causes of open angle is one inability of the trabecular meshwork to cells to function, therefore causing some blockage or defects in the drainage uh, drainage system. So more importantly, the angle is open. The second uh, primary type is narrow angle closure glaucoma. And as you can see, the angle between the cornea and the iris is highly reduced. Okay, and therefore the drainage of the trabecular meshwork might be okay. The problem is that the space where this fluid is supposed to flow is very small. Therefore, the flow will not be okay. 
So this is less common and it is uh, normally a sudden onset and it's also usually painful. So actually it's treated as a medical, medical emergency because it happens very fast and you have a very fast rise of intraocular pressure. So the main important thing here is the reduced angle uh, within this, then this obstructs the outflow of aqueous humor. So as you can see, this is open angle. So the flow is fine, but now the, um, the outflow or the drainage from the trabecular meshwork is the one that is affected. Mm -hmm. In closed angle or narrow angle, the flow is affected because uh, of the reduced space between the angle of uh, the, the uh, iris and the cornea. Okay, so this is another image which shows you uh, narrowed angled, and this is an open angle uh, glaucoma. So apart from the primary, we have secondary gl glaucoma, normally which results from other conditions, or other diseases, which uh, lead to increased uh, volume of uh, the fluid within the eye. So these conditions are like uh, diabetes, or you've had prior surgery, or excessive use of um, corticosteroids. Congenital glaucoma, this um, occurs in babies when there is incorrect or incomplete development of the eyes, especially the drainage canal. So the pressure keeps on building on, and this happens quite early in, in, in life of the baby. So the clinical manifestation, and we'll focus on open angle and the narrowed angle. So the, we have already mentioned open angle is painless, it's gradual. It has high intraocular pressure, but not as high as narrow angle. Then uh, we end up having tunnel vision. And the only sign that is gradually progressive uh, visual field, uh, field loss and optic nerve changes. We may not have pain, we may not have very significant changes, but it's a gradual progressive uh, visual peripheral visual loss. Uh, then we have closed angle glaucoma, which is sudden and there's pain. So that is uh, the feature of uh, closed angle and how it can be differentiated. People will be seeing hollows, they'll have red eyes. And uh, as you can see, the intraocular pressure is very high, above even 30. And then there's corneal edema, then uh, nausea and vomiting, and other symptoms that we might end up seeing. So more importantly, we might also have um, decreased vision and fixed mid dilated pupil. Uh, also temporal headache and uh, capping of of especially of the optic uh, nerve area or the optic disc area. So the diagnosis um, mostly you take history of when we had the onset of the visual problem and physical examination, especially of the visual field tests. So of the visual field using different uh, visual field test um, um, diagnostic methods. Now one of them is use of perimetry and where you're able to um, it, they shine some light, you put your eye on a machine uh, and, and then they shine some light and then you're able to click to show whether you've seen that light. So the area that you've been able to see, this is um, shows a normal vision. And um, if you're not able to see most of the areas, then you have a problem, a, a very big problem. So the severity increases this way. Or you can use a, a simple finger confrontational test where you're able to be asked whether you're seeing the fingers from um, which are being brought from different uh, visual fields. Then tonometry, uh, which measures the intraocular pressure. And we say like for open glaucoma, we have any anywhere above 21. So 22 to 30 will be open glaucoma normally. And then closed glaucoma will be anything above 30. So tonometry works. They just put something like a, pe a pen of some sort. And uh, a small ball hits the cornea and then able to record here, the, the pressure that, that uh, it has. Then there's a gonioscopy. Gonioscopy, um, this one is able to use a mirror at an angle to actually shine, shine light for you to see the angle between the iris and the cornea. So that'd be able to tell uh, if you are having any adhesions, blood vessel uh, aberrance, or reduced angle at this area. Okay. So the other one is ophthalmoscopy. So using an uh, thermoscope to actually try to visualize whether you're having um, capping at the part of the optic uh, disc. And uh, you can see <clears throat> this is an indication of capping. And this is why it's called capping because it forms a uh, depression um, because of the pressure that is being applied there. 
No management, the main aim of the management is basically for the client to maintain existing vision. It may be very difficult to recover um, vision and become very back to normal. The issue is where we have reached is you just try to prevent it from becoming worse. So it involves the non-surgical methods, surgical methods, and a combination of, or sometimes a combination of both. Actually, a combination of both is the best way. So non-surgical methods in, in, in include use of uh, medication, and the purpose here is to basically reduce intraocular pressure. So you can do this through two ways. One, physically constituting the pupil, because if you do so, you will end up um, increasing the angle. Uh, so uh, that we use myotics. Myotics are drugs that um, cause uh, pupillary constriction. A uh, classical example here is a drug called uh, pilocapine. Then the other way is by inhibiting production of aqueous humor. So you're given anti aqueous humor production and drugs or agents like a timololol, um, carbonic anhydrase, um, or epinephrine or other osmotic agents. The other, the surgical uh, methods. So we have uh, laser trabeculoplasty. So basically, uh, laser is shown into the trabecular meshwork and to produce scars and make now the network a bit uh, porous and the, so that it increases the outflow of aqueous humor. Or uh, peripheral iridotomy, also here a laser is shown through the iris so that it makes a hole through the eyes and uh, enables the aqueous humor to flow easily from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber. Then we have cyclocryotherapy, which is basically using a probe, which is very cold um, on the sclera. Uh, around um, around the pupil, basically, at the ciliary body, so that you basically kill the ciliary body, so and you reduce um, the tissue. You, you kill the cells around the ciliary body, so that you reduce production of aqueous humor. Okay, so these are how the surgical methods are. So we said um, laser redotomy. A laser is, is is shown through the iris, and then it makes a hole. So it will be easy for the aqueous humor to flow. It doesn't have to go round, so it can flow easily, okay? Um, Cyclocryotherapy uh, is use this probe, which is very cold, around, and you, you know around, this is where you have the ciliary body, and it will um, uh, therefore consequently reduce the production of aqueous humor. Uh, then uh, laser trabeculoplasty, so laser is shown at the trabecular, Measure can making some holes and scars to enable uh, uh, more drainage or easy drainage. So thank you very much.